After the Taliban regained power in Afghanistan in 2021, it made an ambitious canal project one of its main priorities. With construction already underway in the country's drought-stricken north, Taliban officials say they hope that once completed, the $680 million project will ensure the nation's farming needs. But neighboring states have deep concerns over water security in the region, sparking fears of renewed tensions. The Koshtepe Canal will begin from Amudarya in Balk province and stretch 285 kilometers towards the country's southeast once it's completed. And that's expected to happen within the next five years as the project is in its second phase. But Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan say the canal could radically change the water regime in Central Asia as both countries are concerned the reduced flow will affect their profitable cotton fields. In Afghanistan, the UN says over 15 million people are facing food insecurity. The Taliban says the canal will partly ease that problem. But if it's not properly managed, could it lead to a new conflict in the region? And now for more on the Taliban's canal project and its repercussions. Joining me from Stockholm is water resource specialist Hashmat Sadat. And from Prague, Bruce Penier, a political analyst specializing on Central Asia. A warm welcome to you both and thanks for joining me on Straight Talks. So, Bruce, what do you make of the Taliban administration's efforts and determination to complete this canal, uh, which was first conceived in 1970s? Well, it's understandable that the Taliban want to make use of some of the water of the Amu Darya. Uh, their neighbors north in Central Asia have been using water from the Amu Darya for you know, decades now. Um, you know, the purpose is to water the fields and in uh, the bulk uh, of Jozjan, uh, Faryab, and um, uh, well, those in those provinces in the north, um, and they certainly need the food. So they they certainly it's understandable why they want to get the the water out there to the fields and and start growing more crops in the area. And you know, legally speaking, they're entitled to use this water. Now, of course, this is. Um, clearly upsetting to the Central Asian governments. They have many questions about the quality of the construction of this canal, how much water is going to come out of the canal. If you're a downstream community in Uzbekistan and, and Turkmenistan, uh, you might be looking at being resettled in the next uh, 10 to 15 years just because there won't be any water flowing there. Mm. So, uh, Hashmat, uh, what would the canal once completed? How actually uh, Afghans overcome worsening uh, food shortages after three consecutive seasons? for of severe drought. Yeah, absolutely. The, if you look at it, the Afghanistan internal economy, it's primarily based on agriculture and most people rely on the agriculture sector uh, for work and in incomes. In Afghanistan has millions of hectares of arable land, almost half of which remains um, uncultivated. Mm -hmm. So definitely Afghanistan uh, will uh, focus more on the irrigation schemes development, such as Koshtepa Canal. And mm -hmm. definitely this Af uh, uh, canal uh, uh, will secure water for irrigation in agriculture in Afghanistan, uh, which uh, um, as a large arid country, Mm -hmm. and with limited access to resource, to, to water resources, particularly in its northern region. The Koshtepa Canal could provide reliable water sources for irrigation, helping to enhancing agriculture productivity and food security in the region. Mm -hmm. This will be a crucial for supporting livelihoods and as well reducing dependencies as external food imports to Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. But Afghanistan has its right or any other repairing states has right to take advantage of its sheer water resources, but not harming the environment and the rights of the other repairing countries mm -hmm. in the sheer water reason. So, uh, Bruce, this canal has been criticized uh, by Afghanistan's neighbors, you've just mentioned Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan, who say they'll be negatively affected by falling water flows. Uh, what other concerns do they have? Well, I mean, certainly the, the fact that they're going to have to looking at resettling possibly hundreds of thousands of people in communities is, is a big problem. Um, you know, and, it, and while they can understand that Afghanistan's need and, and right to use some of this water, again, I mentioned there's concerns about the quality of construction of this canal. Um, you know, it's, it's a domestic project. Uh, that obviously, they couldn't get any foreign investors to come in on this. So they're relying on Afghan companies to build this. There's questions about 
Are they lining the canal properly? I mean, this is a huge canal, right? It, it's 100 meters across, 8 meters deep, and it's going to stretch 285 kilometers long. If it's poorly constructed, um, then not only does Central Asians lose the water, but it ends up being wasted in the meantime. And, and I think that's one of the primary concerns uh, at the moment, because we have to rely on the Taliban's word for what's going on on this. I mean, they have allowed some Uzbek uh, inspectors, uh, officials to come across and take a look at parts of it, but we, they're not lo letting anyone look at the whole section of the canal. And since there are no foreign partners, we all, we have to go on the Taliban's uh, word about this being constructed properly and and not ending up being, uh, you know, a giant white elephant, a project that, that ends up failing uh, to the detriment of, of everyone involved that uses water from the Amu Darya. Yes. So, uh, Hashmat, despite repeated warnings from neighboring countries like Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan, the Taliban regime says it doesn't have a formal agreement with those neighboring countries within the Amu Darya Basin. So, uh, what do you make of this and could it spark tensions among regional countries in the future? Yeah, definitely. In general, if we look at it, transboundary rivers are always uh, susceptible to dispute in conflict, particularly when there is no any means of active cooperation between the neighboring countries. Active water cooperation between the repairing states required the basic level of water cooperation uh, uh, quotient by presence of the four basic indicators, which is agreement, uh, uh, or treaty for water allocation in the shared water courses, commission for giant water management, ministerial meetings, and as well technical project. But none of them exist in presence in the Amu uh, mm. uh, River Basin. But for Afghanistan government as well, and as well for the Central Asian countries, it's important that to to uh, to work together holistically and and work uh, uh, jointly to manage this year water courses more effectively and engage Afghanistan in their uh, uh, negotiation or institutional yes. setup, which is which is the Almaty agreement. Afghanistan was not uh, actually part of that one. And as well uh, uh, in the uh, uh, their other institution setup, which is the integrated uh, uh, water resource IW, yes. I, I, ICWC. That is one of the things that you know Afghanistan should be part of this institutional setup that they work together and uh, uh, and jointly manage this uh, shear water courses between mm. all the repairing countries. Otherwise, definitely there will be a huge risk of of mm -hmm. war and conflict in in disputes uh, between the repairing countries, mainly Afghanistan as yes. an upstream country, you wouldn't do any intervention in the river basin. So Bruce, what do you think? Is there a room for cooperation, a regional cooperation from Afghanistan's side? And what options do Afghanistan's nor uh, northern neighbors have at hand uh, to stop or manage the consequences of this project? The Taliban have made clear that they have the right to build this project and they're going to do it. Um, so they're, they're can't, they're, they've already drawn the line there and said that there can't be any argument over this or any debate. Um, there, there can't be any negotiation about whether they're going to continue to build this canal or not. Um, so the central relations are stuck with that situation. Um, you know, and again, you know, to mention, I had mentioned that they have been using this water for decades for their own agriculture and specifically to grow cotton, which of course is a very thirsty crop. So, um, you know, just their use of the Amu Darya in the last 50 years has led to the desiccation of the Aral Sea. Um, so they, they really don't have <clears throat> much of a, a leg to stand on, so to speak, to, to argue against the Taliban using the water here, what possible consequences there could be. Um, now that said, uh, you know, they are talking with the Taliban. There was just a Taliban delegation in Turkmenistan. Uh, there's been visits between the officials from Uzbekistan and Afghanistan several times in the last few months. And this has always been a topic of, of conversation. Um, so what can they do? It's hard to say. I don't think it would come to hostilities. I mean, we've already seen what happened with Iran and, and Afghanistan over the Helmand River water uh, just uh, last year. So uh, the Central Asians are aware of that and aware that the Taliban are ready to use military force if, if needed uh, to defend their rights to the water. Yes. Uh, that No one wants that in the region. Um, and so we're just going to have to see if they can come up with some happy re solution to this problem that, that 
Uh, probably won't suit everybody, uh, but at least keeps as much water as possible flowing to the areas in Central Asia and gives Afghanistan what it needs. Yes. So, Ashmet, is the Taliban using this uh, project to boost its image and legitimacy in the eyes of Afghans? And could this also play a role for the Taliban regime to get some sort of a recognition from uh, other regional countries? Look, the Kostya Pa Canal um, has regional cooperation and friction. So the Canal project uh, could serve as a catalyst for either greater regional cooperation uh, or increase friction among Central Asian countries if it's not actually effectively managed. If the effective cooperation or active cooperation in managing transboundary water resources could enhance stability by fostering mutual trust in respect, in understanding. So conversely, failure to address concern and uh, uh, these concerns and disputes related to the canal could lead to, to height intentions and yes. instability. In the region, that is very clear, but Taliban try that, you know, to, to boost their image and as well to provide services as this, as a, uh, required for their uh, uh, people in nation and as well they focus more on their own national interests as their people demanding from mm -hmm. them. All right, gentlemen, we'll have to leave it here. Thank you very much for joining me on Straight Talk.